Hello and welcome back everyone. This is going to be another quick tutorial, but this time we're going to be having a discussion on how we export our animation for review. So remember, this is not going to be for rendering. I'm not going to teach you how to do a three-step lighting setup. I'm just going to show you how to play blast out your animation once it's done. This is specifically for if you are looking for animation review. This is what we do oftentimes in the animation industry to give feedback to our artists. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that I'm in the camera that I want to see first. For this specific assignment, we're gonna be animating from the front camera. So I really wanna focus on this camera specifically when I am rendering out my animation. So the first thing that I wanna do is make sure that I am rendering from the correct camera. So I'm gonna go up to this tab. Now, if you're animating, you should see the animation tab, but we're gonna click on rendering instead. And we're going to click on this render tab up above click on render settings and from here there's going to be a lot of information don't worry you don't have to worry about it i'm going to close file output and for renderable camera i'm going to select the front camera because this is the camera that i want to see from now if you have a different camera that you have or a renderable camera from a perspective view that's totally fine you have other option here as well so when you do create your own camera, you should see it here as an option too. For now, we're gonna pick front. Now for the resolution for this specific assignment, we're selecting 540 because it's the lower resolution size, therefore making it so that it uses up less memory when we upload to SyncSketch. So for now, we're gonna do 540, but for anyone else who's interested in rendering out their animation, I highly recommend 1080p. But for now, for this assignment, we're gonna be choosing 540. Now that that is done, we can go ahead and close this out. We know that our render settings are correct. The next thing I want to do is make sure that I can see how my animation is going to be framed. Right now, it's just kind of a square, and this isn't really the resolution that I want. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this little box up here called the resolution gate. Now, I recommend clicking this one instead of the film gate, because if you click on the film gate, you are literally going to see more than what will be rendered in your camera. So keep it easy and just select the resolution gate. It's gonna tell you the resolution up here. This is exactly what I wanted, so that's perfect. The next thing, as you can see, I've already done this in advance, but I wanna make sure that my animation is composed well. I want the audience to be able to see as much of the animation as possible. So obviously it wouldn't make sense for me to have it here here, here, I want it to be as easy to read as possible. So for the entirety of this animation, I'm going to keep it all here in the resolution gate. Now that that is done, the next thing we have to do is make sure that when we do render this out, we don't see all of this extra stuff here. I just want the audience to focus on the bouncing ball. That's it. So to make sure they only see the bouncing ball, what I'm going to do is go to show and just so I can see it in the viewport so you can all see what it's going to look like click on the viewport I'm going to click on nerve curves that's going to get rid of the controllers that I had for the bouncing ball the next thing I want to get rid of is this motion trail that I've added here so to get rid of that same thing I'm gonna to go to the viewport I'm gonna select all the way down motion trails now that I have just the bouncing ball and I want to keep the grid just so I know where this is going in space but I do not want to render everything else around the bouncing ball. So to make sure I get rid of that too, this is just the HUD display. For anyone who is unfamiliar with HUD, it literally just means heads up display. And this is what we're using to view the UI in our viewport. So let's go ahead and turn this off. Now we got rid of the resolution gate, but because I know it is exactly where I want it, I'm not gonna move this camera around, it's exactly the placement I need. So what I'm going to do, lastly, is go back to animation now. I have all of the steps set up. The last thing I need to do is play blast this. So you have two options. You can go to play back in your animation settings. Click on the box on the far right corner of play blast. And this is gonna give you some options. An alternative to find this is simply going down to the timeline editor and clicking the little box down below where it says play blast. Now that I have done that, if you're a Windows user, you're probably going to have AVI. 
If you're an iOS Mac user, you might have QuickTime or something else. Make sure you don't select image because it will literally give you images for your render. You want to choose AVI or QuickTime if it is an option. Um, also, uh, there is another option for encoding. If you have audio, you can choose, I believe it's 8.16 or 3. It's definitely got an H in front of it. But if you have audio, make sure you select the H option. So now that that is done, I am going to display size from render settings. If you select window, it will select literally the viewport that you have. That's not what you want. You want to make sure you put all that time in the render settings, select the render settings. After that, make sure it's scaled to one. You want 100% of the animation to be shown. You don't want 50% of the resolution. You definitely don't want anything less than that. You want 100% of the scale resolution to be one. And lastly, make sure you save to file. If this is not selected, you will get a render, but it may not save to a specific location. After that, find the specific location you want to save this. I have a special file set up where I have my Play Blast in one central location. I've done this a multitude of times, but uh, for the sake of the demo, we'll make it number five. Save as a movie file. And now all you have to do, if assuming everything is correctly set up, is press Play Blast. It'll give me an automatic render and boom, my animation is done and complete. I can now upload this wherever I need to for animation review, but this is the gist of how you would export an animation from your Maya scene. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.